So here are some thoughts. Well, first of all, the first thought is that we now understand some things about mathematics that Wigner wouldn't have been aware of. Um, so Wigner had this very clear idea in the essay that just because you could write down simple equations to describe the world, the equation of general relativity or the equation of quantum mechanics or Newton's equation, that therefore you could describe the world, that mathematics was all powerful. Because you start with simple equations, then everything will just unfold in front of you. We now know that's not true because of chaos theory. Chaos theory tells us that even though you can have simple equations, those equations can have enormously complicated solutions. So complicated that they're actually indistinguishable from completely random processes. So this says that we might have the fundamental equations in the world, but that doesn't mean that science is over. Actually, science has just begun then. That's where the beauty of applied mathematics comes in. It can be very hard to find the solution of very simple equations. So I find this kind of comforting because it means that several of us will be in business for years to come. Uh, the business isn't over. The second, thing, the second area of mathematical science that's developed post-Wigner is the marriage, attempts to marry um, general relativity and quantum mechanics. And this is an enormously hard subject. But there's been a lot of progress recently in an area called string theory. Uh, so string theory really is just pure mathematics, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, it uses all the most beautiful concepts of modern pure mathematics to come up with a theory that tries to marry general relativity and quantum mechanics. And there, and there have been several people associated with this. Uh, Ed Witten is a very famous physicist who, who's made very profound contributions. And this is so much tied in with mathematics that he actually got the equivalent of the Nobel Prize for mathematics, the Fields Medal. So Ed Witten didn't win the Nobel Prize for physics. He won the Fields Medal for mathematics, which shows how intertwined mathem pure mathematics and physics have become. Many people involved, but another person who's a hero of mine is Lisa Randall, um, who's a, a very great string theorist. Um, and who actually is, is the most influential scientist, at least physicist and mathematician, of the last 10 years. So her papers, the papers she's written, have been cited by other people more than any other uh, natural scientist on the planet. Um, and these people and many others around them have made very profound contributions. But the most interesting one is they've discovered, and Wigner couldn't have known this. Wigner had died before this was discovered, but that string theory isn't unique. There's not one string theory. There are many, many string theories. And the modern view is that actually there may be many, many universes out there. There could be a colossal number of universes out there, all corresponding to different types of string theory. And maybe we just happen to be in the universe where all the bits of physics are tuned so that we as humans could evolve to observe what's around us. This is the anthropic principle. More thoughts. So mathematics has shown itself to be incredibly useful in describing the real world when you can get a bit of the real world and isolate it from the rest, if you can get one single electron or one single atom. But now there's a great push in mathematics to describe complex systems, systems where there are many, many moving parts all strongly interacting with each other. And this turns out to be fantastically complicated as a problem. Uh, it's beautifully rich. And here we're waiting for. Maybe it will never come, but we're waiting for the, the right bit of pure mathematics to come and help us. We might argue about whether that could ever come or not, uh, but mathematics hasn't proved itself to be unreasonably effective here. It's proved itself to be effective. There are many great applications of mathematics in this area, but I wouldn't say it's unreasonably effective. So I'd say that Wigner was rather limiting when he considered what the natural world was. He was thinking of bits of the nat natural world isolated from the rest. But if you couple together bits of the real world, you find it, mathematics doesn't work in an unreasonable way. It works in a reasonable way. And actually, I can't help saying, can't help mentioning, that Wigner himself contributed some of the most beautiful mathematical ideas in this subject. If you combine matrices with the bell-shaped curve, you get what I spend every day of my life thinking about. These are called random matrices, and they were invented by Wigner. Nor has uh, mathematics proved itself unreasonably effective in, in the biological sciences. It's proved itself reasonably effective. And many, many people apply mathematics to biological problems with great effect. And actually, many people here in Nottingham do that. Um, it's a very important area of modern mathematics. But it's not yet been unreasonably effective. We've not yet got the kind of simple equation with simple but maybe conceptually difficult bits of mathematics involved that ties the thing together. 
So I'd say these are two of the great challenges of applied mathematics. Um, we, they're not solved problems. The problems are open. You asked for open problems earlier. Bring me the Schrodinger equation of complex systems or biological systems. Bring me the uh, Einstein equation of complex systems or biological systems, uh, and then you'll have solved a truly great problem. So let me give you a summary of what I've said, uh, or rather what Wigner said. The unreasonable effectiveness of mathematics in the natural sciences is a mystery, and I think it is. And I don't understand it myself, and I think you should ponder it for the rest of your lives. Our new theories, uh, our th theories in the natural sciences are closely linked with fundamental mathematical concepts. So concepts invented by mathematicians without any applications in mind show up surprisingly, amazingly, uncannily often in the description of the real world and prove crucial to that description. You can't avoid them. You can't avoid complex numbers in the real world. You can't avoid matrices. They really are there in advanced uh, theories of the real world. So these th and the, moreover, these theories turn out to be much more accurate than you've any right to expect. So it's not, this isn't some arbitrary thing. It's not just a guesswork. It's not just an issue related to our consciousness or something like that. As far as we know, mathematics is absolutely central, and advanced mathematical concepts are central to the accurate description of the real world. So I repeat, this is truly wonderful. Something to think about for as long as you can think. Thank you very much.